<laughs> the bright lights are helping. It's either one at this point.
from Duke University head coach Mike Krzyzewski with student athletes Zion Williams and RJ Barrett. Uh, first, an opening statement from coach, K coach Krzyzewski, followed by questions directed for our student athletes. And then we'll then open the floor for questions uh, to Coach K. Yeah, well, I, th I thought we beat a really good team today, uh, uh, a championship team. You know, they're, uh, the, uh, the last month of, this, of their season, I thought they were the best team in their league. Uh, they lost a heartbreaking game against South Dakota State at home, which they dominated. And really, that knocked them back a couple games, I think. And then they... They, they got it back, and, you know, they've been playing beautiful basketball. I've watched at least six of their games. And extremely well coached. The kid, Shahid, gives them a dominant leader, and he played so well today, especially in the first half. And they, they don't turn the ball over. Uh, you know, they, uh, they make you play defense, and then multiple shooters, multiple scores, well-conceived. You know, uh, they're good. Yeah, they're they're very good, and uh, I thought we started out just uh, taking jump shots and not working the ball. And once you get behind, you know, there's the you know there's the confidence level of the other team and the pressure of the game. Uh, uh, and uh, I thought we our defense then picked up for the rest of the game after about ten minutes. And uh, in the second half, we played you know, just beautiful basketball and uh, for those 12 minutes and then we subbed and they subbed and, you know, but it was a, re it was a good game for us and uh, applaud them. You know, they return everybody. Watch out, man. Watch out. You know, they're going to be, they're going to be that team in their conference. That's my, that's my prediction. Questions to the student athletes. We'll start in the back row on the left side. Just as a reminder, please ind uh, indicate your name and your affiliation. Also a reminder that the Duke locker room is open at this time as well. Luke DeCock, Raleigh News and Observer. Zion, for you, there's obviously a lot of attention on you, which is nothing different there, but to be in your home state to deal with this and then to, to come out the way you guys did in the second half, how did, how, how did that feel for you? Um, you know, obviously it is nice to be in my home state, but like I said, in our last press conference, I can't put my personal like happiness before my teammates. And you know, we did start off very like sluggish. We weren't playing very well, but I think in the second half we calmed down and we just started playing Duke basketball. Back row on the right side. Dick Cox with Lindy Sports and Cox Sports Broadcasting. This is for both players. Going into the game tonight, it's your first tournament. Was there any nerves, excitement, or, or how did you feel going into tonight's game? RJ first and then Zion. Um, I felt like we were excited. Uh, definitely excited to play. We've all been you know, growing up watching the tournament for many years, and we're excited to get out there. Just We didn't really have as much energy. We weren't really you know, playing as well at the beginning, but, you know, thankfully we were able to pick it up. Um, yeah, like RJ said, I think we were very excited because, especially for me, you know, I remember watching March Madness, like, live streaming in high school and middle school, um, you know, just watching the intense games and telling myself I was going to be a part of that. So I think last night when I was sitting in my hotel room, I was like, wow, like, I'm actually here. I mean, it's very exciting, but... You got to put the excitement aside and just try to go out there and get the win. Front row, or second row, I guess it is, on the right. Mike McFeely from the Foreman Fargo. Zion, uh, to start the second half there, you wanted a stretch where you, uh, you had a dunk, you had the steal or the, the pick up the loose ball, went down, made the layup. You had quite a stretch there where you kind of almost took the game over by yourself. Can you just explain what, what happened there and, and what led to that? Um, well, before that even happened, uh, you know, my teammates were in my ear. Um, you know, they were just like, be, be me, like, be myself. And, you know, when my teammates and obviously coach said the same thing, you know, when they're constantly telling you to be yourself, you know, it just gives you energy. And I just try to bring energy for my team. and. I think in those situations, I just happen to be in the right spot. Like, 
RJ could have did the same thing. Right side, second row. Uh, for RJ and Zion, David Hale with ESPN. I, I, I'm curious, you guys talked, I think, or Coach K talked a little bit the other day about um, talent, kind of helping talent. Uh, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what your relationship has been like this year and how you each other have maybe helped each other's games throughout the season. It's been great, uh, definitely playing with this team, playing with Zion. Um, I mean, especially for me, if we have a little joke that whenever I'm in trouble, he always bails me out. Like, <laughs> every time I get stuck, he always cuts, and I can just throw it anywhere and get it to him. So we definitely bail each other out, and it's just been a lot of fun to play with him. Left side. Josh Swanson, KFG, KFGO News, Fargo, RJ. Um, can you talk a little bit about Shahid for NDSU, his performance, especially in the first half? He was taking it to us. Um, very dominant leader, like Coach K said, and he really got them going, got them, you know, on their run, and they were pushing it down our throat, but we regrouped at halftime, so it, it was great to see what we did in the second half. The very front row. I'll we'll have uh, one more question for the student athletes after this. Dennis Brunson, Sumter item. Um, Zion, um, on the um, missed free throw. Um, were you surprised? Uh, it didn't look like anybody got a body on you. Um, when you went ahead and t um, threw down the dunk, and that seemed to turn things. Um, did did anybody try to get out on you at that point? Um, honestly, I think it was just one of those like simple mistakes by both teams. Um, they both crashed, and the ball just kind of bounced right over them. But yeah, like you said, nobody was there to box me out, so just went and dunked it. Last question for the student athletes is the back right corner. You guys uh, have a good, strong relationship, good friends, and have a lot in common. Uh, is being left-handed, is that something that is, adds to the bond that you guys have? Uh, I got it. I mean, I guess it's, it's cool, for sure. Uh, we're both I mean, dumb. Being right-handed is cool, too. I guess. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> right. It's not your turn. <laughs> Uh, it was great being left-handed, and we could both use, you know, both our hands, so it's just amazing to see. You don't really know which way we're kind of going to go in the game. Yeah, it makes the connection deeper. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. All right. You guys get in the tub. All right, Coach, good luck. Questions for Coach K? We'll start in the middle, row four. Steve Hall from WZFG Radio. Coach uh, K, in the second half, can you point to something that turned it to let your team get out of the gates quickly and make that big run to open up that No, lead? we were just more ourselves. I, I, I thought the, we didn't start the game the way we have played. We started it being jump shooters and just being fast break. One, most of our possessions had no passes. And therefore, we had no rebounds. I think they were out rebounding us about 14 to six, you know, because we weren't running good offense. And then they ran, they run very good offense, but uh, they're, they're going to get even more confidence when, you know, we take one and miss and that's it. How do they feel us? They, they never felt us uh, on the offensive end of the court. And then we started getting stuff more inside, and and then them they started to feel us on both ends of the court. And but we didn't we didn't start the game well when they did, and that's why they they were ahead. On the left, yeah. Mike Jeffrey Collins with the Associated Press. You said that that was you all just played some beautiful basketball in the second half. What was your favorite part about that first 12 minutes of the second half? No, just that we're winning, man. It was the most beautiful. <laughs> We're winning, got a double-digit lead, and we're hungry, and we want more. And to me, that's beautiful. There's not one play. Yeah. On You're not right. going to win this with Sorry, one coach. play. No. Coach, Jordan came in with the team down seven and kind of helped spark the defense. Can you just talk a little bit about the energy he brings and the improvement he's made to the point that he's now a household name in the rotation? Yeah, well, he's part of our rotation, and he's earned that, you know, starting with the Louisville game. And, uh, excuse me. <coughs> He, uh, he's a very good athlete, and uh, he 
plays defense on and off the ball. Tough. He has not turned the ball over, makes simple plays, and then he hit a big three. That's, that's added. But, uh, no, he's, he's a valuable guy for us right now. And, uh, but he's earned everything. And also what he's earned is the confidence. He has confidence in himself, and he knows that we have confidence in him, so it's a good place. <clears throat> Back row in the middle. Will Palacic, South Carolina Radio Network. Mike, how would you assess the toughness of this job or compare it to others in the past with having as many high-level freshmen as you have, but obviously guys who lack experience playing games on this stage? No, nobody thinks I have a tough job, so I'm not going to talk about a tough job. <laughs> My job being tough, yeah. Just, we've been the leader of the pack for about 25 years, so we get everyone's best shot. That's the toughest thing. And our guys need to be ready for that each time. I'm not saying we're the only leader or the only – but we're, we're one of a handful that does it every year. And so we you – know, getting kids, young kids to understand that, they don't get that in high school. They, they never play more than two. They hardly play tough games because they're the best players by far. And all of a sudden, every game they play is a T-shirt day, a blackout day, a game day, uh, uh, the most viewed game, the, you know, all, th all those things. And, and that's, although I do think it prepares us for this moment where everyone thinks it's the biggest game. We've played a lot of big games, and I think that's why – our kids responded in the second half. Excuse me. <clears throat> Fourth row on the left. Coach, you've coached some incredible players throughout the years, but with Zion and everything that's been written, said about his generational ability, do you find even yourself sometimes saying wow to the things he does on the basketball no, court? I've, I, yeah, but I, I've had a lot of wow guys. You know, you know he's, he's there, but RJ's a wow guy. Trey on defense, when Cam comes down, and hits those uh, trail threes or fast breaks, you know. Javin makes a block. You know, you, you, you know, I get excited for all my guys. And uh, so, obviously, I get excited a lot about him because he's a hell of a player. Last question for Coach here in the front. NDSU was a really I'm sorry? NDSU was a really good three-point shooting team throughout yeah, the yeah. year, and you guys shut them down. Was that a point of emphasis coming to the game? Oh, obviously. Three point? Yeah, obviously. You know, they're uh, – uh, they had to work for their shots. And uh, uh, the thing that they did, though, when they, they missed in the first half, they got their rebounds. And uh, we, we, were not, we were not defensive rebounding. And, but, look, they're a really good team. I, I really – again, I, I watched six of their games. And I, I told my guys, I said, look, they don't beat themselves. They don't beat themselves. They play solid – really good basketball and each kid has a confidence in his role and uh yeah very very well coached team i'm very impressed with them we beat a good team today it's a you know a, a, a good win for for the duke blue devils today all right thank, thank you thank you
We have North Dakota State University head coach David Richmond with student athletes Vinny Shaheed, Jordan Horn, and Tyson Ward. Uh, same as we've been doing, we'll have an opening statement from coach, followed by questions directed for our student athletes, and we will then allow them to be released and then redirect questions to coach at that point. Thank you. Um, obviously, Salway Duke was the number one overall seed there, especially in that second half. And you, um, they get out in transition like that and, and turn you over. They're, they're elite, and that's an exceptional team. And it was a pleasure to, to coach against Coach K and for our guys to compete in that environment. Uh, but more so than anything, you know, what our guys accomplished in the last three weeks in particular and over the last six weeks is tremendous. Uh, but that doesn't come close to what I'm really proud of. What I'm really proud of is how they did it. And uh, we talked a lot about representing a school, a community, uh, a fan base, a state the right way. And, and to me, these guys did it. And again, we talk in our program, a how is way greater than a what. And our, our guys, how they attacked this, how they stayed the course from a group that was two and seven at one point was just an absolute pleasure to be around. So um, appreciate it. This was a great opportunity. Um, our, our guys stayed in the moment. I asked them, <laughs> excuse me, in the locker room to stay in the moment for one more minute and, and challenge them to what are they going to sacrifice to put ourselves in a position where we can be right back here next year. First question for the student athletes here on the right side, row four. Left side, row four. Nolan Schmidt, Bison Illustrated. Vinny, Coach K just called you a, a dominant leader. What does that mean hearing that from? a coach of, of his stature? Uh, it means a lot. Um, a lot of it has to do with what my teammates do. They, they give me confidence. They trust me with the ball. Um, but it means a lot to hear that. Stay here on the right side. Just go back to back, both of you. Uh, Jeff Kopak, The Forum. Uh, Vinny, I think you know Trey for a while now. What was it like battling it out with him? Uh, it was very exciting. Um, you know, you grow up with somebody. Um, playing on the same team as them, and then you compete with them against high school, and then you see them on the biggest stage there is in, in college basketball on March Madness. It's very exciting. Mike McFeely from the Forum in Fargo. Tyson and Vinny, um, the stretch that Zion had at the start of the second half was something else. Uh, have you guys ever seen anything like that? And how would you describe what happened there with, with him going off there? Um, uh, to be honest with you, the uh, game just went by in a flash, so I, I can't really tell you, like, what really happened uh, in certain points in time. But, uh, you know, he went on a stretch where he got some rebounds and he does what he does and makes him uh, a good player. Um, yeah, he's a really good player. Um, he capitalized in transition uh, and on the offensive boards and he's finishing around the rim. Uh, probably one of the best athletes I've ever seen with my own eyes, um, but he's a really great player. Left side. Question for any of the players. Coach mentioned a minute ago, guys, taking a moment in the locker room to think about what you want to accomplish and get back here next year. What do you guys each take away from the last three weeks building toward the future? Let's start with Vinny and then go down the row. Um, you know, Coach just said it, uh, staying in the moment a lot. Um, if you go back to June, um, you know, we had a lot of ups and downs throughout the season. Um, starting in June and getting going to it seven and then going five and oh and then losing three. Um, a lot of it was just staying in the moment and, and learning and growing from those experiences. Uh, I kind of agree with all Vinny said, kind of hit it on the nail, but like, yeah, we just stuck together throughout the whole process. Um, since, yeah, since June, since we've been here in the summer, we've all had our ups and downs personally and as a team. And to kind of get through what we went through and do it all together as one was very special. And we all know that we want to get back to this moment, to this stage, and um, and make it even further. So we'll know we we know we we expect from ourselves. So we'll be right back. Um, what we can take, you know, just how hard we worked, uh, how much perseverance we went through, and you know, when we get back, it's it starts then uh, preparing for that first game, actually that first practice in the summer or first practice in the spring. You know, just preparing for those big moments and those little moments. In the middle, left side. Steve Halston of WZFG Radio to Tyson and Vinny. Uh, can you talk about the opening stretch? You led most of the first half. You got out to a 12-5 lead. What was the feeling like when you were executing and scoring and taking a lead against Duke here in this uh, scenario? Um, you know, it was just playing basketball. You know, 40 minutes were up, and we came out, teed up, ready to play. 
And you know, when you when we play with a whole bunch of excitement, uh, we're a tough team to beat. I feel really good. You know, I think we were getting some stops on the defensive end, um, and we were scoring on offense, and so it wasn't allowing them to get out in transition as well as they usually do. Um, but it definitely feels good, um, you know, to have a lead. Um, only down four going into halftime. Uh, some things we had to clean up coming out of the second half, turn the ball over a little bit, but um, it feels really good. In the back, uh, Kerry Miller, Bleacher Report. Um, for any of you, did playing against Mike Dom multiple times during the season help you prepare for Zion? And who on your scout team had the impossible task of trying to emulate his play this week? Start with Tyson and then come towards me. Um, I, I think they're two totally different players. Uh, Mike Dom, you know, he's he's a great player himself, and Zion Williamson's a great player himself. himself but uh, can't really uh, compare those two. Uh, I think that, you know, you just come out and play basketball at the end of the day. I would say the same thing. They're both really great players, and uh, play against both of them was, was, was nice to see him play against them and stuff like that. But I think they're two totally different players. And in practice, we just kind of challenge each other on both ends, um, whether you're on the scout team or in the rotation guys. So with the scout team playing as Mike Dom, we didn't really get that much time to go over do as the scout. Um, but just pushing each other in practice was huge, and preparing, preparing was, uh, was a big stage for us. They couldn't have said it any better. Last question for the student athletes on the front, front right. Tyson, you guys struggled in the first half and most of the second half shooting three pointers, and that's usually your bread and butters to make three pointers. What were they doing to make it so tough on you? Just, uh, they just weren't falling. I mean, you know, you, sometimes you get a little bothered by their length and athleticism, but you know, uh, you just got to prepare for that and you know, shoot your shot. You know, you can't can't be overthinking sometimes. Uh, I think. That's, that's what kind of happened a little bit, you know, overthought, overthinking really uh, might have affected our shot a little bit. Thank you, gentlemen. Congrats on a good season. Thank, Thank you very much. Questions now for Coach David Richmond. We'll start here on the left. David, Jeffrey Collins with the Associated Press. I mean, what do you do in that, in that second half starts and you can tell that the whole thing is just about to slide down? Is there anything that you can do where you just kind of go, we gave it our best shot? No, nah, that's not what we're about, I'm just throwing out our best shot. But, I mean, obviously, you know, it's Duke, the number one seed. We knew it was coming, and it, it's just really tough when they are so well coached, the length and athleticism. Um, when you get them out in transition, where we, we talked about it to our guys last couple of days, they're elite, and um, it's hard to get a stop when that, when that gets going. In the back right corner. Hey, David, Jonathan Jones, Sports Illustrated. On preparing for a guy like Zion, because you don't see a guy like him ever, because you can't, you know, practice. Is there any guys like him <laughs> no, besides right. him? Exactly, <laughs> right. And you're not in the ACC where you see him twice a year and whatnot. All of those things considering you have two days to prepare for him, how do you prepare for him? Because it seems like whatever you guys did in the first half was as effective as you could have been in the first half. Yeah, I think it's just real important. We, we talk about it where you just got to be solid. You got to be disciplined. You got to make him earn it. And, um, he, you know, he hit a three, you know, something that he hasn't done necessarily at a high level this year. Uh, but, but early in the second half, he got that offensive rebound out the free throw. It's things like that that breathe life into a guy that maybe, quote unquote, for his circumstances, might have been struggling a little bit and just got his energy going. And, um, you know, I mean, he's, there's a reason why they're talking about him being the number one pick overall. I mean, he's a, he's a special talent. Coach on the left. Coach, whirlwind of a week for you guys, winning in Dayton, late night flight here to Columbia. What does it say about your team that they came out and competed and fought the way they did? Yeah, and I, I think when when I asked at Selection Show for people to help tell our story, I think it's I think it's something that I've known, our staff's known, our guys have known. This is a this is a terrific group. Being a student athlete is extremely tough. I mean, there's a lot. It's a lifestyle. You give up a lot of things. You got a head coach that's on your tail all the time, asking you to be better, and and probably not in this voice all the time. And these kids, they just keep showing up. Um, they've done tremendous work in the classroom. Um, they're doing tremendous work in the community and just extremely proud to, to be the leader of these guys. Front uh, right. Yeah, Dave, uh, Jones against uh, Vinny. What do you know about their history together and what was it like watching them battle out today? Yeah, you know, we were just talking in the holding room here back, you know, just, you know, like Jordan played AAU with them and those guys are all really tight. There's, you know, when, when Vinny Shahid is like a, a pipe hyper in the Twin Cities, everybody knows Vinny. Um, same with Jordan. They're at every open gym and so... Uh, whether we played 
somebody from Omaha or somebody from Denver, they're from the Twin Cities. Everybody knows those two guys. And so, um, you know, it's a cool experience for them. And we want to wish Trey, you know, all the best, too. His, his mom's battling some cancer, we understand. And so want to wish Deb. I think she's got some North Dakota ties. Um, all the best. The left side. Coach, you know, to have a lead on the number one overall seed and then to fight for, for 40 minutes against that team, what does that do for your guys that you bring back, you know, every single guy on the roster next year? What does that do for their confidence moving forward? I think that's just that. I think it breeds, you know, a lot of confidence that on the biggest stage against the best in, in the biggest tournament and one of the greatest, and obviously I'm biased, but in the greatest sporting event there is, you know, we competed. And, and what we've got to understand is we put up 40 minutes. We weren't able to do that. Um, and, and by no means am I or we ever going to be about a moral victory. But there's a extremely um, – I, I and we can be extremely proud of, again, a lot of things that we were able to do. In the aisle, in the middle. Dave, how did you, uh, how did you position this game with your team going in? Did you say, guys, we're going to go in and we're going to win the game? Did, we're going to play our best and see what happens? How did you approach the game, I guess, philosophically with your team as you started talking to them about it once you knew you were going to play them after Wednesday's game? Yeah, Steve, we talked about three things. Do the necessary – do the possible, and you will achieve the impossible. And when you tie in the necessary and, and the possible, and, and it wasn't necessarily that we thought it was impossible, it was everybody else thought it was impossible. And I, I get it. I get the percentages. I get the rankings, all those things. Uh, but that's it's just a weird feeling being around our group, and, and you could see it. You, could, you saw it Wednesday night. You saw it in the tournament. Uh, the poise and the confidence they played with down the stretch, it just never felt like you were going to get beat until they really got going and things got out of hand in the second half. Last, co last question for Coach here on the front right. You, uh, I think you shot about 13% on three-pointers in the first half, which is not your norm. Did, did you almost feel like you could have had a lead at halftime if you would have made some more threes? You're only down four, I think, at halftime. Yeah, but that's Duke. I mean, there's the length and athleticism is something that, you know, we don't see, and you have to experience those things, and you get, you get sped up. And I know I give Tyson a lot of credit, you know, in, in his answer to it, but – um, they have the ability with their length and athleticism to speed you up, and that's what happened here this evening. Thank you. Thank you.